and flash back to important points in the past um, is a better way to do it because you're engaging the viewer far more quickly with the yeah things are happening places to go people to see and um, oh the reason why this person is important is because back scene and then back to the action again um, I think the Mandalorian did strike a much better um, balance of action and um, sort of introducing stuff from the past so you know that's that's my complaint with it I'm going to stick with it it's um, you know the whole Rogue One film was probably one of the better movies out of Disney in many many years and it, it it's it's because it was a war film based in the Star Wars universe it wasn't really Star Wars you could have done Rogue One against any backdrop you could have done Rogue One as a Second World War espionage movie but it worked as a Star Wars thing and um, obviously this is the events leading up to that but um, yeah slow start and I would say the same about um, oh, what's it the rings of power it's it has potential but oh my goodness it's so slow we're four or four, five episodes in. You could have done that in two or three. Where we've got up to. It, it's way too slow. Um, there's stuff you look at and you say, why are you bothering with this? This isn't feeding. You know, what, what is the aim of the story? Um, you know, and it, it's something that I think people who write books... Um, George R. R. Martin um, wrote Game of Thrones, but he is—he has a goal. He knows where he's going, and he knows what he wants to tell you. And so everything in the story leads up to that. And there may be exposition on characters' histories at times, or why these two characters have animosity towards each other. But you're never forgetting that the whole goal is to get to where we're going. And it seems a lot of these TV series, they're almost... See, they, you know, they, there's two ways of writing a TV series. You can do the Star Trek thing, which is basically I've got a set of characters, I've got a situation... And we're visiting a planet of the week. And so the story involves the planet of the week. And everything that was at the start of the, the show must be restored at the end of the show. So no character loses an arm because then the next writer has to know that happened. And that's not always the case. So that kind of thing. <coughs> The other way to do it is the Babylon 5 way, which is there's a five-year five year story arc. This, there, we're going places and stuff that happens in an episode, while it may be the alien race of the week, there is other stuff going on in the story that is leading to places later in the series. And I get the feeling that the writers for... Um, the writers for the current iteration of sort of TV streaming shows are sort of conflicted about what they're writing. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're claiming the story is a, you know, you've got to watch all 12 episodes to get the story type of thing. But you're writing each episode as if it's, you know, it's self-contained, almost. 
and um, yeah, you know, the you've you've got to keep the audience engaged in where they go. Yeah, you know, where you want them to go, and if you're not, then yeah, you know, you're going to lose people. And I think that's the problem with both Rings of Power and Andor is you you have a strong potential of losing people if you don't get things happening. Now, I think Andor made the good choice of... Are you going to finish or am I going to have to go back? 99%. Yeah. Yeah, Andor dropped three episodes. Now, it wasn't until the third episode that um, we met the guy... I'm pretty sure it's the guy who recruits Andor into the rebel into the rebellion. So now things are going to start happening, but oh, it took us two episodes to get there. And while there may be some important things that happened in those two episodes, we spent too long just wandering through the story, if you like, and. Um, And so, like I said, you know, you, you, you do episode one and two, and it's... I got to the end of episode two, and I'm like, I'm really not sure I want to continue watching this, because this is really boring. <coughs> <coughs> but everything came to a head in episode three. We met the guy who's part of the rebellion, I'm fairly certain. Sorry. Um, spoilers. And so... Now, now things are starting to move, and you can see. Okay, now, yeah, we've got stuff to look forward to. We can see what's happening, and I think in the case of Rings of Power, they really haven't. Uh, did I want to go this way? Um, yeah, um, they really haven't done that. The story is moving way too slow all the way through so I guess we'll see where it goes and the whole claims of oh people don't like it because racism no If you get a good actor to play the part, I don't care. They need an, they need a compelling story and if you don't if you can't write a compelling story, then I don't like it because you've missed out on the whole point of entertainment. You might think, you know, the the writers and producers might think, "Oh, we're doing this to be, you know, To uh, introduce the racism discussion. Frankly, I don't care. I'm not playing that game. What I want is entertainment. And if you're not going to entertain to me, then I'm not interested in your story because it's not a story. And if you're going to accuse me of not liking your stuff because I'm racist, then you completely miss the point in your job title. I think is the best way to say it. But anyway, enough of that type of thing. Probably, I'm thinking the farm is going to be expanding along this direction over time. Yeah, a lot of the fields are close together. We may end up moving into this house here because it's a lot nicer than the one we live in. Okay, where is field 82 and how do we get there? Uh, this looks promising.
And there is no path through the trees. So I guess we keep going down here. Now the thing with this map, there are a lot of these cross map farm tracks. The trick is figuring out which one takes you to where you want to be. And um, fortunately you can drive through the hedges so uh, it's not absolute failure. Uh, I think we can go this way. This is one of the grass fields we've done before. In fact, I think a lot of these are grass fields we've done before. Um, is there a path through there? No, I took a wrong turn. I uh, should probably have gone that way, maybe. It's okay, we got we got the spraying kit so everything has narrow tires we can do this um oh well, looks like we should have gone i think there's an exit to the left there nope uh Okay, maybe that wasn't the right turn to take from the road, and there was another one. Me! Turn, 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 yes! Alrighty. So, here's another farm track. There's another one over to our right, but hopefully this one gets us close to our goal. And there, but we can still drive this way, which gives me hope that there are more farm tracks down here and we don't dead end somewhere. Ah. Well, we dead ended somewhere. Which probably meant we should have taken that path over there. So let's just drive through the hedge, drive across the dirt. Um, I might get her right in case my hair on my face. And I think the other side of this hedge is where the farm track I should have been on is. There now. Fixed it. These are some interesting looking fields. And again, no, nope, I want to be over there. Sometimes the easiest way to do this is to start in the field you want to be in and then figure out the way back from it. driving in the owner's fields on the way. Wow. Okay. So. Oh, right. So. That's the field I need to do. That's the farm track. I believe that track takes us all the way. We're up here. This track takes us down here, down here, and then through this farm, which we've done most of these grass fields at least once. So, hey, I think there is a link somewhere across here to this farm. I think we took... Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I got lost. I would think we came out this way and we shouldn't have done something. Anyway, we're now on the track I want to be on and we need to get this thing lined up. Getting that all straightened out. 
Um, I think I'm going to run north-south on the uh, GPS just because that's where we're facing, although it was planted east-west. S. That's all set. Set a north-south cardinal back X forwards. Oh, we need to fill up with uh, diesel. Okay, and off we go again. So yeah, as I said, I do want some longer arms for this. Obviously longer arms will make maintenance cheaper because the tractor has to drive less far. But we also want the spot and spray, which is gonna cost a little bit to upgrade. Sprayers, sprayers, there. spray. Weed spot spraying is 39,000 and see the problem is we, we've got 18 meters if I went 20 it'll cost an extra 6 if I then go up to 28 it'll cost me an extra 10 so total 16. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I don't want to be doing is doing an incremental increase on the boom length. I just want to um, I just want to um, buy, buy the final what I want and stick with that. It's, li it's like the mistakes I've made with tractors in the past. Is I buy the smallest one then figure out it's not sufficient so I'll buy you know, a, a bigger engine and then figure out oh, well, that's not quite enough either so I'll buy the next bigger engine and you're buying you're paying for each engine increase at full price so in some ways it's better to you know buy buy the the base tractor so like with the Massey Ferguson we bought the 105 um, I think that's the base model and then if you do not go 115 and then decide oh i actually need 125 and then decide oh i actually need 135 that's the expensive way to do it if you think you're going to need 145 horsepower upgrade it to 145 horsepower don't don't do incremental updates on engines or boom sizes or anything like that working width if you need the you know like this one it was on sale, hey, I'm going to need this piece of equipment, I'll buy it in its basic form. And everything else I do to it is an adder. And if there's multiple options on one of them, I'm going to wait until I can afford. So if I decide, yeah, the 40 foot boom is the one I want, I'm going to wait until I can afford the 40 foot boom and then slap that on them and be done with it. <coughs> <coughs> I'm not going to say well 32 will do me for now and then we'll upgrade to 40 later because that's you know it's going to cost me one and a half times as much as just going straight to the 40 and as I said you know basically the reason for this one at the moment is having the tank capacity and we've still got you know the boom length on this is the same length as we had on the previous sprayer kit that we had except it was red As soon as I get to the end of this, I'll set the worker off. Mute the microphone, and I'll be back in about five, ten minutes. There we 
りした Actually, I should turn that on. If I put the、uh, GPS on, it'll get us lined up. Then always turn your GPS off before you engage the helper. And there goes the helper. I will be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm back. We will turn the worker off, slam the brakes on, turn on the GPS, engage the GPS, turn on the sprayer, and off we go. Okay. So, yeah, Mrs. Osa and Teenage Osa are about to go out for the morning. They're going to collect the kids. They're probably all going to be doing McDonald's for lunch. So,、uh, yeah, we're good now.、Um, it is coming on for 11 o'clock. So, I think I did well with this purchase. This is good. We, might, we could do another crop spray on the way home. I'll see where they're all positioned, I guess. Ooh, hey, done. So, well, this is cruise controlling down the road. Fifty four is just that field. Fifty eight is just. Oh, the trees are all that. Yeah, I don't want all those. I was kind of. Sometimes I don't like it when you have, for example, fifty four all the way to the edge of the map so you get all the trees with it. But I was kind of thinking it would be nice to have the trees.、Um, just because then I can. That's actually quite cheap,、um, although it's not a good price at the moment. What is this one? That one's low, pro low value land. That one's a high value land. So, buying that, we're actually 15% off the land value. Could be a good time to buy. We don't have the money for it. Well, okay. Currently, we do not have enough money in the bank to buy it. However, We've just completed, almost completed three contracts. 
which I believe <coughs> is another 18,000. Put it on 52. I still don't think that's quite enough. But, uh, oops. Tree. I think possibly the field we're currently in might include might include some trees. Nope. So the trees are on this map are completely separate lands. Oh no. 60 and 59 includes the trees to the north. 10,000 for a set of trees there. Oh, another block of trees there. If we wanted to get into uh, forestry There are options. Oh, you can buy that land. You can buy that land. Um, now this is where our um, our thing is. How much is that? Uh, Thirty-seven thousand. So that's where our um, grain mill is. And if we bought that land, we would be able to put shed or fuel tanks on it. Um, we also have interest in that there, which again, only 13,000. We own the building on the land, we don't own the land. Oops. So, uh, there are possibilities. But yeah, it's it's been a while since we did the lawfolds thing and just <coughs> and obviously back in Farm Sim 17, you didn't need to own the land in order to uh, chop down the trees on it. So we did a lot of working our way around the uh, the woodlands on that map and just completely decimating the trees and replanting them. But we did it with limited equipment. Chainsaw, um, tractor with front loader, and a logging trailer. And I was using measure, so I was manually chopping the logs to about 8 metres at a time, so they'd fit on the trucks. And again, it's, it's the... Um, it's the sort of argument of do I spend half a million on tree cutting equipment or can I get away with it using the tractor I already have and I just need a logging trailer and a, a chainsaw and we're good. And um, I think law folds we proved you can, you can get away with a lot logging with cheap equipment. Obviously, if you're going to do a major forestry map, you're probably going to want to uh, consider um, heavy-duty logging equipment for that. So, hence the uh, Platinum Expansion for 22. Um, I believe that map is going to include some arable, but it's going to be predominantly forestry. Um, I'm not really heavily into forestry although it's it's a nice diversion of something else to do other than farming stuff but, uh, as I said we, we could look into that and one of the reasons I'm thinking that is because it does provide an income um, outside of everything else and you can you know you can chop down some trees over the winter when nothing else is happening as it was this year we've I think our last episode was November um, which was the last few bits and pieces needed doing before winter I think we planted our grass fields and did stuff there but it was really a uh, this this is just before winter and quite frankly the only thing I did over winter was transport the grain to 